The Nintendo Switch represents a generation that combined both the handheld and home console experience into a single device that shook the industry. This would be the first time we didn't get a separate handheld and home console from Nintendo, and quite frankly, it's been a major success. But what if Nintendo gave us a dedicated Switch home console with better cooling, as well as overclocked system specs providing better performance at cooler temps? Well, that Switch may have looked a little something like this. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today I have a really cool mod to show you for the Nintendo Switch OLED. And while the Switch isn't exactly a retro console quite yet, this is still a pretty awesome mod. So this is the TV shell mod created by Set. He's a game developer from Michigan with a passion for the Nintendo Switch. This shell converts a regular OLED switch into a dedicated home console, meaning it only plugs into your television and can no longer be used as a handheld. Now I can already see the common saying, why on earth Tito would you want to take away functionality from the switch when it can do both handheld and dock mode perfectly fine? Well, there are several, I think pretty compelling reasons. First, this mod was initially designed as a way to salvage broken switch consoles that can no longer be played in handheld mode. For example, if the display is no longer working or is broken in some way. Plus, this mod is super easy to do. You just need a screwdriver and some patience. However, the most compelling reason to do this mod is that it greatly increases the cooling capacity of the console. With its larger 80mm fan, this case mod significantly reduces the overall temps of the switch. This is especially useful for consoles that are overclocked. When an overclocked motherboard is installed in this case, it actually runs cooler than a completely stock console that is docked and not overclocked, which is pretty incredible. As you can see here, I have Tears of the Kingdom running overclocked inside the new shell, and it's running quite a bit cooler compared to the stock unmodified switch that is not overclocked. Amazing. Now I do have to provide a disclaimer here because it is always risky to overclock your console, so make sure you know what you're doing as you could risk damaging your Switch, or worse, getting your account banned by Nintendo. So please exercise caution and overclock your system at your own risk. Anyway, with that caveat out of the way, I will be showing more footage on how well this case works at keeping the Switch running cooler later on in the video. To me, this is the most compelling use case for this mod. Running the system overclocked to get better performance like increased frame rates, all the while not overheating the console. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you what comes with the TV reshelling kit. Then I'll demonstrate how to put it all together, go over all of its major features, take a close look at the cooling performance of this mod when playing a few different titles, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. Okay, so obviously the most important part of the kit is the shell itself, which comes in three parts. Here we have the shell base, which in this particular example comes in a really cool two-tone orange and black color scheme. This is where the motherboard will reside. Next is the mid-frame, which houses both the larger fan as well as the main board from the dock. Speaking of the fan, this kit will include this 80mm one, which will help pull a massive amount of air through the case. Set also includes this USB Type-A to Type-C dongle, which extends one of the dock's USB ports to the outer case for external accessibility. And lastly, the kit will include a set of screws to mount everything to the shell. Now, of course, with this kit, you'll also need to provide your own OLED Switch console as well as the dock. From the Switch, you'll need to harvest the Game Card SD Card Reader Daughter Board, the Power Volume Button Flex Ribbon Cable, and of course, the motherboard along with the fan and heat pipe. You'll also need the battery, which in my case was sent to me pre-mounted to the case. And from the dock, you'll need both the main board along with the USB-C connector and its associated ribbon cable. Okay, so that's everything included with the kit, as well as all the parts you need to salvage from your donor console. Now, let me show you how to put it all together, which actually brings me to the sponsor of today's video, iFixit. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably noticed that I constantly rely on my trusty iFixit ProTech toolkit for most of my modding videos. 
iFixit is on a mission to empower us retro tech enthusiasts and DIYers, helping us breathe new life into our consoles and other electronic devices. Now for the entire month of September, iFixit is offering not one, but two pretty cool promotions for all you iPhone users out there. Firstly, all iPhone parts are up to 20% off in store. And if you do purchase an iPhone part, you can use the code BOGOCASE to receive a free Insight iPhone case. Don't miss out on these fantastic deals and join iFixit in the journey of renewing your devices to their former glory. So for all your electronic repair needs, definitely check out iFixit using the link in the description below. And again, a huge thank you to iFixit for sponsoring this video. All right, now let's go ahead and build this custom Switch console. Okay, so I have to mention that this tutorial does not show you how to install a mod chip or overclock your Switch. If you wanna learn more about those topics, there's plenty of resources out there that should help you out. This tutorial only covers how to install the OLED switch into Set's new custom shell for better cooling. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is drop in the battery into the base shell inside of this little cubby. All you need is a bit of double-sided tape to hold it in place. Next, grab your OLED motherboard and insert the dock USB-C assembly into the port on the motherboard. Then drop the motherboard into the base shell as shown and align the various screw bosses with the holes on the board. And then fasten it in place using five of the included screws on these specific locations. Now would be a good time to clean up the SOC heat spreader so we can apply some brand new thermal paste later on. And do the same with the small heatsink. Next, gently reconnect the power button ribbon cable to this connector here and lock the bail. Here you can see that the power button and the membrane have been already put in place. All we need to do is slide in the power volume button PCB. This is definitely a pretty finicky process because you need to ensure that the power button clicks freely. It takes a bit of trial and error as well as some patience to get everything set correctly. Be sure to test the power button out to make sure that you are getting a clicking action. Once you're satisfied with the power button, you can go ahead and drop in the original switch fan and plug it in. Now we can go ahead and put in some brand new thermal paste, followed by the heat pipe assembly. Secure it in place with three more screws. Next, being cognizant of this connector here, drop in the game card reader daughter board, ensuring that you feel it click into place. And then with three of the longer screws, secure the board in place. And before we move ahead, don't forget to insert your micro SD card since this isn't really accessible from outside the shell. Before we drop in the mid frame, plug the battery into the motherboard, ensuring that it is fully seated. Now set aside the shell base and grab the mid-frame. We'll need to insert the large fan as shown. Make sure that you install it exactly like this as we want the fan to be pulling air through the case. Next, carefully drop the mid-frame into the base shell while pulling the two antennas and ribbon cable through their respective openings as shown. Then with a bit of double-sided tape, adhere the two antennas into their designated areas. Now go ahead and connect the ribbon cable to the dock main board, ensuring that the blue tab is facing outward. Then tuck the excess ribbon away and place the dock main board onto the corresponding screw posts on the mid-frame and then secure it in place with four of the included screws. Please note that the screws I'm using here are a bit too small and don't exactly hold the board down reliably. However, the final kits will ship with the appropriately sized screws. Next, we can go ahead and plug in the fan as well as the USB-C dongle into their respective ports on the dock mainboard. Note that the USB-C port is also held in place with some double-sided tape. This here is a little LED indicator light that would normally install here, but the cable is unfortunately too short. 
Not sure if Set is going to be including a different LED with the kit, but for now we're going to go ahead and place the LED here by the fan so that we can see the LED illuminate through the fan vents. And lastly, go ahead and drop on the shell cover. And there you have it, the TV shell mod for the OLED switch. I really think it would have been so amazing if Nintendo released a dedicated home console version of the Switch. We got a handheld only version with the Switch Lite, so to me it would have been really neat to see Nintendo make this a reality. But thankfully we have an amazing and vibrant modding community with folks who take matters into their own hands. And here we have a really cool dedicated home console version of the Switch. What Nintendo don't, the retro modding community does. All right, so with our custom Switch all set up, let's take a quick look at its features. So there really isn't too much to show here. This basically operates as a normal dock Switch console. But regardless, let's take a look around the shell to see how everything is all laid out. Around back, we have these huge vents which let in a ton of air to cool the Switch components. We also have all the I.O. from the dock mainboard, like HDMI, the USB-C port for powering the unit, and the Ethernet jack to hook it up to the internet. On the left side, we have another USB-C port for plugging in accessories like for when you need to charge your Pro Controller, as well as more ventilation here on the bottom. We got more vents on the right side, and in the front is where you insert your game cards. There's also this small opening right here for the stock fan to exhaust from. And lastly, here on top, we have this large Xbox One styled vent where all the air is pushed out. Overall, I think the design is extremely elegant and we can all agree that the Macho Nacho logo just came out amazing. Set sent over a bunch of different colors and I think they all look great. Okay, now the moment I'm sure you've all been waiting for. Let's take a look to see just how well the temps are controlled with this new case. So the first game I wanna check out is Tears of the Kingdom running on a completely stock OLED switch when docked. So here on screen, you can see all the metrics of the game running, and just as a note, the ambient room temperature is right at around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 21 degrees Celsius. Here, you can see that the SoC has settled in at around 47 degrees Celsius, the PCB at about 50, and the skin is about 44 degrees. And it looks like the fan is running at about 28%. Now with those metrics in mind, let's take a look at Tears of the Kingdom running fully overclocked in the new custom shell. The GPU, CPU, and RAM have all been set to their highest setting, and frankly, the results are pretty stunning. The SoC is running at about 45 degrees Celsius, while the PCB is at 42 degrees, and the skin is also around 42 degrees. So the SoC is running roughly two degrees cooler, while the PCB is eight degrees cooler, and the skin is again two degrees cooler. Additionally, the stock fan speed dropped to 20%. It's definitely pretty incredible that the overclock system is still running cooler than a stock non-overclock switch that is docked. Now, while the main goal of this video is to showcase just how cool the system runs, one of the main benefits of running the system overclocked are better frame rates for some games, and keeping temps down I think will help the longevity and reliability of the console. Okay, now let's take a look at another game. Super Smash Bros. on a stock console has the SoC running at 47 degrees Celsius, the PCB at 50 degrees, and the skin at 44 degrees. Now running the same game on the overclocked switch with the custom shell, we see the temps drop to 33 degrees on the SoC, 34 degrees on the PCB, and 35 on the skin. Also, the fan turned off altogether while it was running at 20% on our stock system. Again, these are pretty fantastic decreases in temps across the board. Now I want to show you a game that had some really interesting results. This is probably the most drastic decrease in temps that I've seen, and that's while playing the game Metroid Prime Remaster. Here on a stock system with no overclocking, the console is running at a temperature of 49 degrees Celsius on the SoC, 53 degrees on the PCB, and 46 degrees on the skin. Now, taking a look at our modded switch with the overclock settings, the temps are way down. The SoC is running at 30 degrees Celsius, the PCB at 35, and the skin at 38. This is a reduction of 13, 17, and 8 degrees Celsius respectively. These are pretty big drops, especially for the PCB, which is running 17 degrees cooler. And again, this is all overclocked. Needless to say, if you like playing your Switch dock, this shell definitely makes the whole system run cooler, 
which is fantastic. Anyway, now that we know how this kit performs, let's go over the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, like I mentioned previously, I love how this kit gives broken Switch consoles a second lease on life. This was one of Set's original goals with the project, to find a simple way of getting these broken consoles functional again, but it's amazing to see how it worked out to improve the cooling performance as well. Another pro of this mod is the ease of putting it all together. All you really need is just a screwdriver and some patience. This makes this project pretty accessible to a lot of folks, which is great. Additionally, because the battery is still retained in the console since it's needed to boot the system, it also acts as an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, because you can simply unplug the console and it stays on so you won't lose any progress. It's a pretty cool side effect of the design. Also, this is a pretty cheap mod that just looks great. I can definitely see this sitting in my living room setup. And speaking of price, Set has an Etsy shop to sell these, and they're being listed for roughly 35 to 45 bucks depending on the print material and colors. And remember, this includes the fan, screws, and the USB dongle. Not a bad deal at all. I'll have his shop linked in the video description below so you can check it out. So Set told me that he's going to be initially selling these kits to recoup some of the costs of designing the shell, and that he hopes to open source it sometime in the future, which would be just absolutely fantastic. And lastly, the performance of this mod is incredible. Being able to run the Switch overclocked and play games like Breath of the Wild at higher frame rates while also keeping the console cooler is simply amazing. Now I do have to again caution that overclocking your console does carry some risks, even if it is being adequately cooled. So please, please use caution if you plan on overclocking your system. Anyway, those are the pros. Now let's get into the cons. And really the cons are minimal. This thing is pretty great overall. The biggest con, which really isn't that big of a deal, was the installation process for the power switch. This was a bit finicky and definitely the hardest part of the install. Set told me that he is actually in the process of updating this design to make this part a bit easier. Another con, which again will be fixed for the kits that he ends up selling, were the screws used to mount the dock mainboard to the midframe. The heads on these screws were too small and did not adequately hold down the PCB. But again, this will be addressed in his final version of the kit. Now this con is a bit of a nuisance and I hope that set can address it somehow. Unfortunately, when the console is plugged in, the fan is on and stays on, even if the switch is off. I think the fan ports are always getting power, which is the cause of this issue. The only way to turn the fan off is to unplug the console. And the last con has to do with fan noise. While it's not super loud, it's definitely audible. Not sure if much could be done here, but I wonder if it's possible for Set to make a revision of the midframe to accommodate a similarly sized Noctua fan. While Noctua fans tend to be quite a bit pricier, I do think they are quite a bit quieter. Anyway guys, there you have it. The TV custom shell for the OLED Switch. Now I should also mention that Set is working on a similar custom shell for the V1 and V2 Switch consoles, so definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel and following me on my various social media outlets so that I can let you all know when those are released. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again very soon.